my name is Sandy Fifecoat and I will be your host. In this video, we will be discussing world population and the World of 7 Billion Public Service Announcement Contest, which is hosted by the Population Education Program. Now, we're also introducing a new feature at the end of this WattCast called the Top Facts You Should Know. For today, our tips will be centered on world population and the World of 7 Billion PSA Contest. Now, I'm excited today because joining me in this discussion, we have a past participant in the contest, Anthony Warzeka, who is a world history teacher from Floresville, Texas. We also have Pam Wasserman, who's the Vice President for Education at Population Connection. Thanks to both of you for joining us today. Now, we're going to jump right in because I think this is such an interesting topic today. It's something that affects all of us. So I'm going to begin with a question for Anthony. Let's talk a little bit about world population and why, Anthony, from your perspective, do you think it's important for students to really be keenly aware of issues around world population? I think one of the biggest reasons is due to the fast population increase in the world. Since 1750, the population of the world increased from 1 billion, and today's, which is over 7 billion. And uh, there's never been so many people on the Earth's surface than there are right now. And, you know, we have nothing to look back on to see how such a large population impacts the Earth, and we must watch how we use our resources, the resources on the Earth's surface. The observation I make with young people is, from a student motivation perspective, this is a topic that engages students, and any yeah. any time we can find something like that that's of high value to students, it's a it's a really good thing. Well, because every student is a member of the population of the Earth, so it's very important for them to understand, you know, their impact on the Earth. Mm -hmm. Let's talk a little bit about this World of Seven Billion PSA contest. Pam, can you give us a little bit of detail about that? What is this contest exactly, and how can teachers learn more about it? Well, you know, as, as Anthony mentioned, we, we reached $7 billion recently in, in 2011. And as a lead-up to that, because our program does curriculum development and outreach to teachers, we wanted a way to engage students on this. So that was the first time we launched this contest. And the students, the high school students, are asked to prepare a public service announcement that they write and design and videotape of 30 to 45 seconds in length that shows the connection between world population growth and one of several topics that we offer them. So the last time around when Anthony students entered, we had several topics. The top ones that students chose were water and energy to show how they're impacted by, by world population growth. This time around, we have three topic areas, food security, so understanding that we're at 7 billion now and we have about a billion people who don't have enough to eat. Our population is expected to grow to 9 billion by the middle of this century, so thinking about how are we going to feed a growing population. The second topic is impacts on wildlife habitat. We know that as the world population grows, people need more homes, more businesses, more roads, and that kind of development encroaches on the habitat for other wildlife. And then the third topic, which is a great one for, for the social studies classroom, is looking at gender issues and the status of girls and women around the world and what that has to do with population growth. You know, how does the role of women around the world affect the number of children they have and the opportunities available to them? And we want this contest to be a learning opportunity, so we provide on the contest website, worldof7billion.org, we provide background readings for the students and for the teachers and other resources they should look into so that they can put something together, you know, that is going to enlighten other people who see their PSAs. There are prizes for the contest. We give $6,000 worth of prizes. There's 12 students who can get awards. We have a first prize of 1000 second of 500 and then two of 250 for each of these three issue area categories. So we're hoping to get a good mix of entries for all three of these categories. The contest was very successful last time around. Uh, we had over 600 entries. The students did a fantastic job. And teachers like Anthony, you know, assigned it in the classroom. So it really, you know, went from a classroom activity to something that the students could individualize and compete in. And we had so many teachers who said, are you going to do it again, that we decided um, we would launch it again because, you know, the population issue hasn't gone away, even though we, we reached that milestone last year. 
So we're very excited and our goal this year is to, is to really increase the number of entries and to give teachers a lot of lead time to figure out how to incorporate it into their classroom. So that's why we're launching this now and the students will have until till mid February of 2013 to get those in. So anytime, you know, in the fall or the winter that, that teachers want to incorporate the contest, we're going to give them a lot of time to do that. Now, I want to talk to Anthony again about your experience. What kinds of new skills or knowledge did your students gain last year, Anthony, from participating in this exciting program? Well, I think one of the biggest skills that they learned in this competition and the, and the program was technology skills. Kids love technology today. I mean, they use it in their everyday world. Even at different levels of the use of technology that were in the group, they came together and they recorded and they produced the public service announcement all by themselves. And, you know, the more advanced kids taught to the less advanced kids and it was just a real good learning experience for all the kids. Some of the kids got to teach others just about technology. It was really successful to see them work as a team. I think the second is just a realization of such a large population on the Earth's surface. I, I mean, I had freshmen and sophomores, but even the older kids, they just didn't have that realization of how many people are on the Earth's surface. And just in the past uh, 100 years, how many people have been added onto the Earth's surface. And I think it was a big eye-opener to them just to understand that, you know, population is growing very quickly. My students really focused on natural resources because that's what they were interested in, and uh, just the importance of uh, resources on the Earth's surface. You know, we do have renewable and non-renewable. Uh, we have to conserve, you know, what we have of those resources. One of the things, my last point, was uh, leadership skills. The kids really uh, stepped up, and we had one or two leaders in the group, and different students took different skills, you know, like if they wanted to act, or produce, or edit the video, and it was just a really great experience, you know, as a teacher to see kids take this and run with it and collaborate as a real team, and that was one of the best opportunities that I got to see out of the kids. Well, you've just bullet pointed out almost all the 21st century skills that every teacher in this country is trying to address, so it's it's very exciting this one program can give you so much richness. Pam, do you have anything to add from, I know you work with a variety of teachers. We just heard from a social studies world history teacher. What about from an environmental science or biology or natural science perspective or what kind of skills do you see students gaining? Well, I think the last time around when we did the contest, I would say there was a really good mix of entries that came in from classrooms, both social studies and science, and even from some media and communications classes, although many high schools don't have those. But these topics definitely fit into the environmental science curricula and biology, as well as social studies. And you might notice from the topics I mentioned for this year's contest, there's a lot of crossover. So we, we really encourage teachers in, in a number of disciplines to enter. And one thing I do want to mention, too, is that we want to celebrate the teachers that get their students to enter the contest. And so any teacher that has at least 10 students who enter, we send that teacher a full curriculum um, of our materials that they can use, you know, from year to year as they're teaching about population issues. Wow, that's awesome. That's a big commitment. Let's talk a little bit about tips and suggestions because I know listening to this podcast today, we probably have a lot of teachers who are wanting to jump right in. Anthony, do you have any lessons learned or tips that you would share with other teachers who might want to participate? I think the biggest thing for the project is uh, just to plan ahead. Start the project in advance, you know, not just a week or two or a few months in advance. When we got the postcard, which that's the way I received the information from Population Connection, you know, it seemed like oh, it'll take a month to do this, but in reality it takes a good amount of time to prepare and research you know, a topic that interests the kids. I would say research first and then film. You know, I think you need to have your leadership roles for your kids and your topic and all the information you need just to make sure that you have a successful uh, public service announcement at the end in the video. Another lesson learned, let, you know, let them have fun. That's the big thing in my classroom. You know, it's all about making learning fun. And the kids had fun with this, but they also worked as a collaborative group, which I really liked because 
they didn't even have to ask each other what they were doing because they knew what they were supposed to be doing because they knew their role so well after they started to work together. You know, at the beginning, I just facilitated just to give them some ideas, but after that, the leaders took over and they pretty much ran with their ideas. You know, ask your school for assistance. Uh, I would contact the technology department if they if you need cameras, the drama or the art department for props if, you, if they're needed for your uh, video, and uh, you know, take the benefits of your school and get the school involved to let them know that you're doing it, and uh, you know, just have support from the school. We showed it in our announcement. And the kids are really proud of it because the, all the school got to see it. And they just took ownership of it, and they were really proud of the outcome. And that's the biggest thing, just to make sure that they're proud and uh, they had a good time doing it and that they also learned from the experience. Wow, really exciting. Well, unfortunately, that's all the time we have for today. So, Anthony and Pam, thank you so much for all of this amazing information that you've shared. And again, um, thank you so much to Population Connection for this um, wonderful opportunity that you're providing for students and teachers all over the United States. It's really exciting. Now, we hope you'll all stay tuned for our top five you should know facts about world population and the World of Seven Billion PSA contest. Uh, we'd love to hear from you also. So if you have feedback, or you have suggestions for topics that you'd like to see us cover in a future Wattcast, we hope you will email us at wattcasts at weareteachers.com. Thanks again to both of our participants today, and we hope you all have a terrific rest of your day.